says on the, on the Feast of Pentecost that the Lord has gathered them together. And this is true with every gathering in the church. And today is no less true. We're all gathered here by the will of God and by the providence of God. It's good to see you all again. Did you have a good summer? Yes. Are you ready for school? Yes. Good. Good. We have much to learn from Christ, first and foremost. Let's hear what the gospel says. So we heard two gospels today. One was the calling of the apostles. And he says to them, they're with their fathers, they're fishermen, they're in the boats, they're doing what they have to do for a living, and they're in obedience to their father. And he says to them, come after me and I will make you fishers of men. And it's very interesting what it says in the gospel, because it says, straight away, without a second thought, they followed the master. Think about that. You're with your father, you're in obedience, you're serving him, you're living from your work, and you leave it all behind at a moment's notice because the master is calling you. And he says, I will make you fishers of men. They believed him. This is the basis of everything in the church. This is the basis. If we do not believe Christ, we do not trust him, in other words. That's what that means, to believe. It means to trust, to entrust ourselves. And when you truly have an encounter with Christ, he fills you with such inspiration, you cannot but trust him. He is so inspiring that you want to run after him and you want to trust him and be with him. But he promised them he will make them fishers of men. What a promise. Because they believed that this was the basis for the grace of God to work within them and for them truly to become fishers of men. And they left and they followed after him and then began this great economy of salvation. And in the other gospel we have a continuation really on the basis of what you hear in the first. Look, the basis again was we trust Christ. And then what happens? The burdens become light, it says. And the yoke, what's the yoke? Anybody know what the yoke is? A yoke is what they put on the, on the, uh, uh, the, the, the oxen. The oxen, yeah, not the cow, the oxen. When they're plowing the field, right? And it, and it's, it goes two by two. And they have to be on both of them, so they stay straight. They do not veer left and right. And that yoke, the Lord says, is good. That yoke, in other words, these trials, this cross that you're going to bear, these, the struggle that you're going to have, it's good. It, it's very good for you. It does well for you. And this burden that you're going to have, if it's, my, if it's in me, in me, means you're in communion with Christ, you have the grace of God, you're communion with Christ, then this burden becomes light. He says, all who want to be with me, I call you all, come to me, all who will labor in a burden. Who's not laboring burden? Is there anyone in this life who's not laboring burden? Everyone is laboring and burden. By our passions, by the sin of the world, by the uh, hatred or the gossip or the jealousy of the world, that burdens us, saddens us, the, the divisions and all the rest, it burdens us down. He alone gives us rest. He alone. There's no other place. You look in vain if you want to find rest in food or in pleasure or in vacations. Yes, you can have a, a respite for a bit, and, God, and that is good, and that is of God as well. But if you want true rest in your soul, in your heart, you only will receive it from Him. And so you have to... To in order to do that, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. And this is what I want to end with. We're going to be learning from him in our school, because it's an Orthodox Christian school, but all of our life. We never stop learning. If we stop learning, God forbid, we are lost. We have turned away from Christ. We have to learn in everything that happens. Trials, tribulations, accusations, whatever comes our way. This is an opportunity for us to learn from him. For he is meek and humble in heart, he says, and you shall find rest to your souls. In him, when we have communion in him, when we trust him, when we follow after him and believe his words, then we have rest. Then this struggle, this cross is good. It's good for us. It transforms us. It transfigures us. It makes us into new people. And in this, this uh, 
workshop of virtue, which is the church, we become different. We become holy. We become, and everything becomes light. All the struggles. How could the martyrs withstand and the confessors withstand such tribulation, such, such uh, attack on their soul and body, and such a temptation from the enemy, only in Christ and only because the burden, the struggle had become light. It had become actually joyful. Not just light, not just a, not just a physical or a, a lightness in terms of the difficulty, but actually a joyfulness, a joyfulness in the midst of the sorrow. So let's have, uh, let's increase the trust. The, the apostles said as much many times. Increase our faith, they said to our Lord. We need to increase the trust in the Lord, and not in people, and not even in institutions, but in the Lord himself and no one else. And then... We will begin to live a life which is joyful no matter what happens. The waves will come and hit and they will return back into the sea. They will not overcome us if we enter into this joy of the Lord, which means that we take on the cross, we take on the burden, but it does not overcome us, but becomes light and joyful.